Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Irvin, and I work for uh, Jodo Paper. I'm actually the West Coast uh, Jodo Paper representative. I know there's a lot of people out there probably today who are tuning in from the East Coast, and so good evening to, to you out there. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to be handing you over to uh, Jimmy Lamb, who is uh, an expert uh, at Sawgrass Technologies with regards to uh, the sublimation business. And basically what this webinar is going to be all about is uh, what you need to know uh, to get into the sublimation business. Um, at the end of this session, uh, there will be a question and answers session and uh, I'll also be coming back online to just talk to you about a couple of prom uh, promotions that are running at the moment. Um, so over to you, Jimmy. Well, thanks, David. Glad to be here. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, looking forward to a nice session this afternoon with a lot of good information for you and uh, hopefully some good questions back from you. So again, my name is Jimmy Lamb. I am with Sawgrass Technologies. I'm the manager of education and communications. I have a very extensive background in the world of product decoration as I started my career actually as an embroiderer and then over the years got experience in a lot of different other areas, you know, finally coming into the world of digital. So today we're going to talk about, I want to start a sublimation business. What do I need to know? Okay, Not all that difficult to be able to answer those questions because sublimation, great process, but not extremely difficult to get involved with. Now, I know a lot of you have a lot of different backgrounds there. And uh, for example, some of you may be screen printers. And if you look at the world of screen printing, obviously, screen printing has um, a lot of challenges, you know, things like uh, color separations and all the art set up and everything else. But we don't have that with sublimation. The neat thing about sublimation is it's a very simple process to bring into your operation. Now, if you look on the screen right here, I'm, I'm showing a collection of different items. And if you look at these items, you're going to notice that uh, the one back here in the very back center is embroidered. If you look over here on the right, you see this is actually a T-shirt that has been screen printed. Okay, Or maybe it could have been done with DTG, but in this case, it's screen printing. So if you're a screen printer, you can do that shirt. If you're an embroiderer, you can do that shirt. But what about all this other stuff? You see, your clients need all that other stuff. And if you're somebody right now who can only do one or the other type of process, you're not able to get all their money. And your goal is to get as much money out of them as you possibly can. Because I don't care who your client is, I guarantee you that they probably have a need for things like promotional products, awards, plaques, signage, uh, gift items uh, for their staff or you know, key customers. You know, there's a wide variety of things that they need. And if you're not producing those, they're going somewhere else to get it, which means they're spending money somewhere else. Now, even worse, if they go somewhere else and are able to get um, those items, plus whatever it is you're doing right now, then they may not even come back to you for whatever it is you're doing right now. So the key is you want to be diverse as much as reasonably achievable such that you can take care of customers, get a bigger share of their disposable income, uh, and keep it there with you. So and that's what I'm showing here on the screen. You can see this is all tied into one account. And all these items in front of those two shirts are sublimated, each and every one of them. So, you know, for a fraction of the cost of screen printing or a fraction of the cost of embroidery, look at all the wide range of things that you can actually do with sublimation. Okay, one quick question here. I see what is the difference between sublimation items and unisub items. Uh, sublimation is a process, which we're getting ready to discuss, whereas unisub is a manufacturer of blank items for sublimation. Okay, so if you look at this plaque, for example, when you buy the plaque without any decoration on it blank, uh, that particular one was made by Unisub. So you would be buying through a dealer, because Unisub is a manufacturer, but through a dealer like Jato, you would be actually buying those different products. So the Unisub is a manufacturer of blank items. Sublimation is the actual process of decorating those items. Okay, so let's get a little bit deeper here. The sublimation advantage, when you start looking at what sublimation is about, very quick setup, which is important because if you have a good quality image or graphic, you should be able to start sublimating it pretty quick. Okay, we don't have to go through color separations and, and all those kind of things that you know, people like screen printers do. We don't have to go through everything that embroiderers do. Okay, quick setup, flattened artwork. JPEGs, if it's good quality, you can work with it. Unlimited colors, not really, but uh, there's enough colors you know, for sublimation that it might as well be unlimited. Uh, the reality, every process has some type of limitation how many colors it can produce, but we're not fixed by our equipment because we're talking literally here thousands and thousands and thousands of colors that we can do with sublimation. 
very low production cost. The average 8 inch by 10 inch image sublimated is about 50 cents worth of ink or less. So there's not a lot that goes into that. We'll talk more about production here in just a minute. No special skills required. There's a little learning curve. You can do a little training and whatnot, but not difficult to learn. Color separation I've already mentioned. And then finally, it's an ideal short run production solution, which means when someone wants to get one piece or two pieces or three pieces, it's affordable. Now, certainly, we want to put the right margin on that. We don't want to be selling onesies and twosies and giving them away. But if you're used to having processes where you need 48, 72, 144 pieces to you know, even make a decent profit, you'll find with sublimation, I can start out doing one if I need to. I mean, hopefully, we're doing more than that. But when we're doing a lot of personalization and customization, small runs are important. And if you actually look at the latest and hottest trend in the promotional products marketplace, that trend is personalized promotional products, which instead of producing, let's say, a uh, mass producing a group of coffee mugs for a client, let's say your client is FedEx, and FedEx is going to give those mugs away to their clients as their promotional product. Uh, instead of just mass producing those with the FedEx logo, the trend now is that for key customers, they're actually putting the person's name on there as well as that FedEx logo. So when FedEx gives it to you know their key customer name, John Smith, he has his name on it. And he's more likely to keep it and use it and whatever. So you really can't do uh, those types of runs uh, with any system where you have to mass produce because personalization is definitely a onesie and twosie kind of thing. So what exactly is sublimation? Well, sublimation is a digital printing process. It's, it uses a transfer um, methodology and looks very similar to some of the transfers that are used for, say, cotton t-shirts. But there's a lot of difference with sublimation between a standard uh, transfer. When you look at transfers and in inks, typically when we're applying a logo to something using ink, we're applying it to the surface. And there's binding agents within that, that ink that help that ink bind to the surface. Sublimation is a process that is chemically very unique because it doesn't bind to anything using artificial binders. Rather, it uses a molecular process to attach to what it's decorating. Now, sublimation only works with polymers and polyester. Sounds a little scary. Don't let that bother you. We're going to cover that more here in just a minute. But sublimation chemically bonds with polymers and polyester. And it does it at a molecular level. Very different because it actually penetrates and impregnates itself within um, a subsurface type of application. Okay, So the way we do this is we're going to print out uh, the image using sublimation uh, dyes because it's truly a dye process, not an ink process. And we're going to put it on that sublimation transfer paper with an inkjet printer. We're going to put it under a heat press. Set it at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. At 400 degrees Fahrenheit, the sublimation dye that's on that paper turns into a gas, number one. Uh, the polymer components of the item we're decorating, they actually open up. Think of it as little tiny cells that open up. Gas goes in and is received internally by those cells, which are open. And then once we open up the heat press and let it cool back down, those cells close up and encapsulate the ink inside. So it's actually subsurface. The thing about that is if you go and try and scratch the surface, you can't do it because the image is within the surface, not on the surface. So you'll find that with sublimation, the images don't crack, peel um, with use. In the case of apparel, and it only works with polyester apparel, and in most cases we're talking about polyperformance apparel, it won't fade, crack, or peel when washed. That's huge because pigment, dye, pigment inks on cotton fabrics do. Okay, we all know that, but it doesn't happen that way with sublimation. So it makes it totally unique. It's the chemistry that makes it so unique. And then you start looking at all the different things. And you start wondering, I said it works with polymers and polyester. It sounds very limiting. But the reality is there's hundreds and hundreds of products out there that have been created specifically for sublimation, meaning they're either polymer-based to begin with or they have a specialized coating that's been produced with a computer-controlled machinery uh, to adequately attach it to the surface. So for example, we have wooden plaques with polymer coatings. We have metal products like, you know, you see the little flasks over here. They're actually metal, but they have a polymer coating so they accept sublimation. So the reality is you have so many products that it's unbelievable how many different products we have out there um, for sublimation. So it's there, okay? So you don't need to feel limited. No, you can't put it on a cotton shirt 
but you can only put it on polyester shirt. But with the world of poly performance apparel, uh, that becomes huge. Another neat thing for dye sublimation is provided you have a good quality image, you can do superior, absolutely superior imaging when you apply it onto you know, a, a substrate designed for sublimation. So much so that we have wedding photographers doing wedding portraits using sublimation. I mean, it's that good if the image is good enough. I mean, obviously, if you have a really bad image, sublimation is not going to make it better. But provided that we do have a high-quality photographic image, we can reproduce that with sublimation. That's pretty huge because you at first you think, okay, pictures. You know, I, I'm not in the photography world. I don't care. But when you start looking at things like award plaques, the best award plaques actually have a picture on there of the person who's receiving the award. When you look at promotional products, having images on there become really huge. You're doing things like with a racing team. I've done a lot of things with racing teams. They actually have their car or their motorcycle or their boat or their bike, whatever type of racing are in there, in there in a picture rather than just static text is huge. So that becomes a nice aspect of what we can do there with sublimation. And finally, I had mentioned the poly performance apparel. One of the hottest things going out there now because of companies like Under Armour who've revolutionized the idea to the masses of poly performance apparel. Poly performance it's basically polyester apparel that has a performance characteristic. And a performance characteristic means moisture wicking. Now, moisture wicking isn't necessarily breathing, per se. But with moisture wicking, you have cells in the fabric such that it pulls perspiration away from the skin. In the winter, pulling it away from the skin means that you don't get so cold and clammy. In the summer, pulling it away from the skin is a bit of a cooling effect because it's an evaporative type of thing. So either way, it's become extremely popular. And one of the best ways to decorate it is with sublimation. You know, sublimation doesn't have white ink. And we can talk more about that as we go. So dark apparel may not work out for you. Okay, but that's uh, the only situation where we really see any kind of limitation for sublimation as far as ink colors. And more on that in just a few minutes when we talk about color. So suffice it to say, tons of applications in markets. And here is just a great example where you can see where pictures actually can make a difference. Uh, if you look at some of these acrylic award products, here, you can see having the person's picture in there instead of just static text is huge. Here you can see it on a Galaxy 5 cover, I believe that is where you have that individual that's personalized with his uh, picture, name, whatever else. Okay, Something we can do really well with sublimation. So let me take you just a little bit quicker through the process, a little bit deeper, show you step-by-step -step how sublimation works. Kind of gave you the roundup, but I'm going to break it down a little bit. Basically, sublimation has three basic uh, components for production, a computer, a printer, and it has to be an inkjet printer that is capable of processing sublimation dye. And that doesn't mean any printer off the shelf. Okay? There's actually a limited number of printers. But these are off the shelf printers. So just, you just can't use any printer in the world. Okay? Uh, you, you would go to your dealer, as in Jato, and they carry a couple of different printers. And those are suitable for sublimation. Now, sublimation comes in uh, cartridges, just like regular ink but designed specifically for these printers and the technology of the printers. And then, of course, you need a heat press as well. Okay, So those are your components, computer, heat press, and printer. Of course, sublimation dyes and sublimation transfer paper. So just for fun, um, if we took this image here, let's say we're going to do some coasters. I know that's exciting, but whatever. So we have a piece of artwork. We sit down with our computer using whatever graphics program we choose to use. There is not a sublimation software per se. You can use any graphics program. One of the tricks that a lot confuses people at the beginning of their sublimation career is they look at their artwork and it's in a square or rectangular format and they have to apply it to something that's round or a triangle or a pentagon or um, a flip-flop, which is a weird shape. And How do you change the artwork? Well, the neat thing is companies like Unisub, which was mentioned earlier on, they actually have templates online that you can download. And this is a template for this specific coaster. And you can download it in a Corel format, or you can download it in a Photoshop format. So let's say I'm working in Corel. So I set up with my piece of artwork. I download the template of the item I wish to decorate. If I combine the two together and then use Power Clip, what it does is it crops and resizes it to fit that specific template so that we know that we have the right size image and the right shape. If you're a Photoshop user, you can do that through layers. Any questions on that, you can actually visit the Sawgrass website, sawgrassinkink.com, and look at our how-to videos. And we've got a quick little video that shows you how to do it with Photoshop, quick little video for CorelDRAW. Okay, very simple, but it's a very important part of what we do. So we set that artwork up. 
and then we're going to print it out. And when we print it out, we like to put as many of the same image as we can on the same sheet of paper. We want to maximize our paper usage and maximize our production efficiency, and we're going to see more of that in just a minute. So we're going to print it out using the sawgrass sublimation die and the appropriate transfer paper through our supported inkjet printer. Uh, print time, 8 inch by 10 inch image, uh, it runs um, anywhere from about 30 seconds to 40 seconds, so it doesn't take all that long. Uh, the name, uh, somebody has a question, can you please repeat the name is Unisub, U-N-I-S-U-B, Unisub. Okay. All right, then you're going to go over the heat press, and what we did was we took our blank coasters, and we attached them to our paper. We used a couple of strips of uh, heat tape to hold it in place, let's say scotch tape. Then we put it in our heat press and set it for approximately 400 degrees for about a minute, and then all that wonderful sublimation chemistry takes place. Everything transfers from the paper into the coaster. We open up the heat press and we remove the coasters from the paper. This is not a decal. The paper gets taken off and thrown away when we're done. Uh, time under the heat press is about one minute. Print time for this was about 30 seconds. And then we had to, of course, carry it from the printer over. So let's say it took two minutes to do it. Not too bad. There we go. I did four of them. Took about two minutes, maybe three minutes, you know, depending on how fast or slow you are. And that's pretty much how we do most of our sublimation. Okay, and we're, I just want to give that general approach. A couple of different products, maybe a little bit longer dwell time or whatnot. And there are some you know, different things we do a little bit with apparel. But for the most part, that's how we do most of our sublimation. Pretty quick, simple, and easy. So what kind of graphics do you need for this? What kind of graphics programs? Well, this is designed to work with any graphics program. The most common graphics programs used for sublimation are CorelDRAW and Photoshop, followed by Adobe uh, Illustrator, and then finally maybe uh, Photoshop Elements. And... Uh, Really, it's, like I said, it's designed to work for pretty much any uh, graphics program. And there are some advantages to those particular ones, as I'll tell you more about here in just a moment. Uh, the standard DPI requirements for sublimation is 300 to 350 DPI. So you don't have to crank it up to 1440, okay, because you're just going to waste ink and slow everything down. 350 is going to be fine. Uh, even 300 in most cases is fine for sublimation. You do want to check your computer before you go, maybe an invest in it. It doesn't require a lot of power. It does require some power. Uh, you can find it. I don't, I don't know if Giotto has this posted on their website. You can find this on the Sawgrass website, Sawgrass Inc., I-N-K, okay, Sawgrass Inc., I-N-K dot com. Uh, but it will tell you the basic computer requires minimum requirements. Because even though there is not a sublimation software, we do encourage you to use sublimation printer drivers which therefore, having to install those on your computer, the computer requirements become important for that. Okay, sublimation printers. So let's take a look at what we have out there. As we look at the printers, and we're going to look at two specific printers that Jato carries. These are the two most popular sublimation printers in the marketplace. Uh, when you see references to speed or cost of image, it's this image here which was provided courtesy of Great Dane Graphics, good friends of mine. So they provide this to us, and we use this in all our testing. So we printed it as an 8-inch by 10-inch graphic, and that's where we get the numbers that you'll see when we reference speed and image cost. So the Sublojet R printer series makes use of the Rico printer line, specifically two printers, the 3110, the 7700, which we'll look at one-on-one -on -one here in just a moment. Uh, both of these features high viscosity gel sublimation ink, and the beauty of the gel sublimation ink is the fact that um, because it's more of a gel-based, it's still a water-based ink, but it's not watery, uh, meaning that everything is encapsulated more of in a gel, so it's suspended, it's in a better suspended state inside the cartridges, and it flows through the systems better, and you have less ink clogging. That's the beauty of sublimation, gel sublimation ink. You're going to get vibrant color, stunning solution. We have both Windows and Mac color management solutions, which we'll touch on in just a moment. Uh, automated printer maintenance functions. This is probably the best feature that Rico has, meaning that as long as you leave it powered up, it will do self-checks on the print heads, and if need be, it will run print head checks and pretty much take care of itself. A lot of other printers don't do that very well, and you hear stories of printers that clog up because they weren't used over a long period of time, but the Ricos will take care of themselves if you leave them powered up. Low printing costs as low as 43 cents 
There we go with that image again, depending on which printer that we're actually using. I just rounded it off to 50 cents. I think that's pretty pretty accurate. High speed printing up to 82 prints per hour, again, using that image, depending on which particular printer you're running. Okay, So, you know, we got some pretty decent speed. We got some pretty decent costs is what we're looking at here. So there's two basic Ricos, the 3110. This is the most popular one of all. Uh, and a big reason for that, I think, is the price point. If you look at the 3110, the MSRP at the bottom is for the printer only out of the box. You actually have to buy the printer and put the inks in it and papers. And uh, David will give us a little bit more information on that. But probably about $560 or so to get into that printer as a, star, a sublimation startup. I'm just referencing just to let you know that these are off-shelf printers, and they're very affordable uh, to be able to get you know, into your business. It's a four-color system. It utilizes um, three colors in black, C, M, Y, K, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. A largest paper size, 8.5 by 14 inches. This one can do up to about 82 prints per hour of that particular image I showed you of uh, the shark. It has a cartridge-based system, so it's plug-in ink cartridges. We have both... Um, Power driver and Mac profiles for color management purposes. Printing cost eh, around 56 cents a sheet or so uh, on this one for that 8 inch by 10 inch image. And very, very popular with startup sublimators. I mean, this is the number one selling printer out there. Then it has a big brother. The big brother is the Ricoh 7700. Again, it's a four color system, but here's a big difference. Largest paper size is 13 inches by 19 inches. Okay, the other one, 8.5 by 14, is the largest paper size. So you can see. If I get a larger paper, I can do larger imaging. I can also do a little bit more production efficiency, as I'm going to show you more on too here in just a moment. This one is a little bit slower, about 69 prints per hour use of that 8 inch by 10 inch example that I showed you. Uh, printing costs a little bit lower than the other one, about 43 cents. So I say average is about 50 cents per cost and two. Uh, the MSRP is $12.99 on the printer by itself, and then when you add inks and everything else, it runs it up a little bit. But I'll tell you what, there's a big special running on this thing uh, through April 20th. And that's something that David's going to tell you a little bit more about, too. Uh, it's a good time if you were looking for this particular printer to consider it because it's a couple hundred dollars off right now. Just something to keep in mind because I'm a big fan of that particular printer because my background is apparel. And that's why I started. That's what's near and dear to me. And if I'm going to do apparel sublimation, I'm going to really target in on this one because of the larger paper size, which means a larger imaging size. And, of course, you need transfer of paper and inks. And the reason I really want to hit you on the transfer paper is please keep in mind it's sublimation transfer paper that I need. There's all kinds of transfer papers. So you want to make sure that you're using sublimation transfer paper. And Jotho makes it easy because they know all about paper. So when you're buying your system, they're going to package your system with the paper and with the inks to get you going. And then when you just need more paper, all you got to do is call them up and say, I need more sublimation paper. Give them the printer and the size you know, uh, paper. And they know exactly what you need. But just you want to keep that in mind because... There are different types of transfer paper, and not all of them work with sublimation. So that's an important aspect. So we need the printer, we need the inks, we need the paper, we need uh, some kind of graphics to get going, and then we need heat press. So the heat press is uh, very, very integral here, very integral. Okay. Some applications, all you need is some heat, but with sublimation, you need precise heat for a precise period of time with a very precise amount of pressure, a very consistent amount of pressure. Not something that you need for a lot of other transfer applications. So the key is good quality heat press will deliver that. But if your temperature is off or drifting, it can affect the color of the image. So you want to invest in a good quality press, and it's going to cost you a little bit of money. But you know what? A good quality press will last practically forever. So you want to keep that in mind. So the same with uh, sublimation. The process depends on time, temperature, and pressure. Typically 60 seconds for most items, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for most items, and a medium pressure off the heat press, medium and consistent pressure. If you have a warped platen, you will have inconsistent imaging. If you have hot and cold spots, in other words, temperature variations across your platen, it will affect your imaging. So these things are important that you get a good quality press so that you're consistent. A lot of other applications you can get by with just being close, not with sublimation. So you want to keep that in mind. Now, the most common press out there is probably the clamshell heat press. Nothing wrong with the clamshell. I got one here. Okay, Clamshell, very popular. Uh, it opens up. It's uh, hinged back here. So when it opens, think about the jaws of an alligator. 
and it opens up since it's hinged back here that uh, the front part comes up, the back part stays down because it's hinged. And you, know, you put everything in there and you close it down and away you go. So I food carries the Hotronics, which is an excellent press, and they also carry some of the Insta models. Now, the next press is the Swing Away, and I'm a big fan of Swing Aways. Okay? I like to make my opinions known. Nothing wrong with a clamshell. I have a clamshell, okay? Uh, but the swing aways I like better. And what happens with a swing away is the entire upper platen lifts straight up and then swings off to the side so that you have full access to the lower platen. You can kind of see it happening here. So this top half lifts straight up and then swings all the way out of the side so you have clear access to the work area. If you go back, and I should have had a picture of this open, but if you go back to this one, because it's hinged back here and it opens up at an angle, it's, you got to be really careful wearing that work here that you don't burn your knuckles because you've got a hot heat platen right above your knuckles. Uh, so you want to be very careful about that. So I like the swing away because it gets out of the way, but it also has very, very consistent pressure. And that's very important, very consistent pressure, equal pressure. Makes a lot of difference in some of the things that we do. And here's one of the reasons why. If we get into thicker things with sublimation, it's a little harder to get consistent pressure. And we need consistent pressure completely. You see right here, for example, maybe that's an award plaque, which can be pretty thick, okay? Nice, big, thick, solid wood. Uh, or it might be a ceramic tile. There's a lot of things that we do that are very thick with sublimation. A lot of things we do are very thin. But we've got to have consistent pressure all the, on every part of the surface or we get uneven colorization. Now, this is kind of a sketchy drawing, but uh, I did the best that I could here. Uh, if you have the clamshell, and you have something really thick, when you go to close it down, and this is an exaggeration to make it easy to see, okay? Uh, I mean, there is cushioning in here so that it can, uh, you know, kind of sink down with the pressure such that it does help to get more consistent pressure that way. But keep in mind that when I put in something thick on something that's angled, it's not as easy to get consistent pressure. Thin stuff is fine all day long. Don't worry about it. But if you do with a swing away because the top half goes straight up and down, you always are going to get consistent pressure. So me personally, I like swing away. But I'm not telling you that the clamshell is bad, okay? I'm just telling you there's some advantages there. Something to think about. Make the investment in the right equipment up front, and then it's going to take care of you down the road. Trust me, I've spent hundreds of thousands in equipment, and over the years learned a whole lot about buying the right thing first instead of having to figure out later, okay? Keep that in mind. Okay, quick comparisons. We're looking at those two Ricoh printers. These are the two that um, Chato carries, Ricoh 3110 and the Ricoh 7700. So now if we actually take into account the heat press and the printer, what can we do with that? If I took the 3110, it's a smaller uh, paper size, 8.5 by 14. I can probably get fairly easily six of these, uh, in this case, Galaxy 5 or six iPhone covers are roughly the same. I could probably print out six at one time or maybe six coasters. It's all the coasters that we were doing earlier. So I can get that many on one sheet of paper. So that means in one printing I can get multiple images and then put it under the heat press. Now, if there's one item on the paper and I put it under the heat press, it takes one minute. If there's six items on the paper, I put it under the heat press, it takes one minute. So it doesn't matter how much is on the paper, it still takes one minute. So wouldn't you rather you know, press like six at a time instead of one? And that's one of the things that is important to get good efficiency with your sublimation is to kind of mass produce or you know, you know, utilize your paper and your press the most you can. So with an 8.5 by 14 sheet of paper, you can probably get about six of those or six of those. If you're doing short images, you could put the paper like left to right and you could get maybe that much coverage and up and down about that much coverage. So you can do shirts, you just can't do big images. You also want to make sure that whenever you're buying the heat press, and Jato can help you buy the right heat press uh, when you talk to the salespeople there, always make sure the heat press is bigger than the paper. You don't want to get a big printer with big paper and then your heat press is smaller because then you can't maximize your output. Okay, You want to maximize your output, so keep that part in mind. Now that's the 3110. Six and six, medium size images on a shirt. If we bump up to the 7700, I got a bigger area on the shirt because now I got bigger paper. I can get up to 13 by 19. There is an optional item called the bypass tray that you would add. I think it's about $150. That will make sure that you can get up to 13 by 19 paper. But uh, all in all, you can get 13 by 19 paper. 
Now look at how many of these same size iPhone covers or Galaxy 5 covers that I can put out in 13 by 19. I can easily get uh, a dozen of them. I can do six with a smaller printer. I can do a dozen with a larger printer. Same thing with the coasters. I got more coasters in there. Uh, in the case of the coasters, I got a dozen of those too. Excuse me. I got 12 of uh, each in there uh, the way that I got this set up. So I'm maximizing my coverage there um, and my printing and my time. Remember, the heat press time is the same whether I got six on the page or 12 on the page. Wouldn't you rather get 12 out instead of six? Printing time is going to be a little bit longer, obviously, because I'm covering a larger area. But these are pretty fast printers, so it's only going to add maybe you know 10 or 15 seconds to it, uh, maybe 20 seconds, okay, to be able to do the bigger one. But where you're really saving your time is is under the heat press. Now, of course, if you're buying the 7700, keep in mind because you got that larger paper that you're going to need the heat press that goes with it. So that's always important when we're buying these things that we're mating things up to work together the right way. And then finally we have the mug heat press. If you want to do round things like mugs and water bottles and whatnot, then you're going to have to get a press for that. And Jato has some very nice mug press options that give you the ability to do a couple of different size types of items. So rounded things, we have to use a specialized press for that. So the color of sublimation. You know, you might have heard, and I mentioned it, and you probably heard it other places, that there is no white ink for sublimation. So if you don't have white ink, you cannot reproduce the color white on a colored surface. As well, if you're working with a colored surface, uh, having a base of white ink makes the image that you put on top of it stand out much uh, with much richer color than if you try to put color directly on color, especially with digital. Because when you're talking about digital inks and dyes, uh, we're talking about translucent such that the background color has an effect on the color of the image. And you can see that here on these two shirts. Number one, if you look at the one on the right, the white one, everywhere that's white is left open because there's no white ink. Therefore, the background color of the shirt, the white shirt, makes up for not having white ink. When I go and put that on the blue shirt, all those open areas are now blue because there's no ink coverage there. The other thing is, notice that the Eagles logo is not as vibrant on the blue shirt as the white shirt because, again, the background color is having some effect. So when you start doing colored surfaces, you may have to go in there and beef up your colors and make some adjustments there. But you can't just magically create white because it doesn't exist. Now, if you look how white ink works, uh, if you look at the way that screen printers do it and DTG people, they're able to put down a white layer first on a dark surface and then put other colors above that. But you really can't do that with sublimation because sublimation being molecular, the gas has to penetrate into the fibers of the shirt. If you put a white ink base there on top of the shirt, the sublimation doesn't bond to the polymer fibers, we have a problem. Uh, the way it looks for screen printers doing it is they'll put down that white layer and then they'll cure it with heat and then all the other colors go on top. They still left these areas out here open so that background white layer they put in there works. So the reality is a screen printer is screen printing a dark shirt by changing the area of where they're putting their ink to white first, then putting ink on top of it. Can't do that with sublimation. Now, the only time that's a problem is with apparel because apparel is the only thing where with sublimation the image is smaller than the substrate and where we're working with colored substrates because 95% of um, sublimation is done on items that start their life being white. So when you order a sublimation substrate that's not apparel, it's going to be white. There's a few options for silver and, and, and bronze for special effects with some of the metal products, but pretty much it's going to be white. And when we decorate it with our image, if we need this, let's say this is a photo uh, plaque. Let's say it's a, a wooden plaque that's going to have a photo on it. Well, we're going to buy it, it's going to be white. It's got a polymer coating that's white. Well, the, the photo has a black background. That's not a problem because we don't start with a black background. We start with a white background, and we make the background black through our image. So when I create the image, I want to do what we call full bleed, which means covers from edge to edge. And whatever color I want that item to be, I do it through the imaging. And everywhere that's white was just left open so that the background comes through. And you can't feel it. It's not like there's a gap where, where that little bit of snow is that the ink is missing, 
Uh, because this is all embedded in the surface, if you rub your ink finger over there, you don't feel any difference. I mean, it looks like it was printed. You know, it works out really well. So most of the time, we don't really have that problem. We just have it with apparel. One thing worth noting is there is a process called all-over sublimation where you um, take a white garment and you completely image the front with a transfer and then you completely image the back with a transfer. Requires uh, wide format equipment, which can be quite expensive. And it's something that most sublimators don't really get into, but contract it out. So just keep that in mind. If you know somebody or you have a customer that needs something like this, you know, we can do all over sublimation or the people that can do it. And they do the same thing as what that plaque I just showed you. Everywhere they need white, they just leave it open because the shirt starts out being white and we recolor the shirt as part of the imaging. Color management. You know, one of the things with any kind of digital process, not just sublimation, is that the colors on the screen don't always come out the right way out of the printer. And everybody's like, well, what happened? Well, very easy, uh, but a little tricky. There's two th components that affect color as it moves through your system. The first is when we're working on a computer monitor, we're using RGB color, which is an additive process to create the colors we see on the screen. When we go to the printer, we're using CMYK, which is a subtractive process. So it's a different way of making color show up. It's a different kind of chemistry. And um, because of that, it's like going from one language to another. So the color on the screen has to be converted to um, a different format for it to come out of the printer. So we're going from RGB to CMYK. That's our first challenge. The second challenge is the range of color. Monitors can produce a wider range of color. Because for one thing, RGB can produce a wider range of color uh, than the printers can. Now, this is what we start talking about as being color gamut. What is the range of color something you can reproduce? And you will find gamuts are different on different printers. It's not just like there's one gamut for all printers or there's one gamut for CMYK. It's a factor of its CMYK, the type of printer, you know, the um, components of the printer. You know, different things affect that range. So the little thumbnail here represents the visible range of color. And you can see with this monitor with the dotted lines, it has a really big range. If we go over to the printer here, it has a very small range. So the trick becomes if I'm trying to choose a color way up here that's just inside this dotted line, can I reproduce it over here? Nope. Now, does that mean can I, I can't get that color out? doesn't mean that, but it means that as far as a direct transfer from there to there, the color may not transmit through. So the key here is to work within this range of color, not within that range of color. So how do we know what the range of color is for the printer when we're working on the screen? Because most of you are just sitting on a screen in Corel Draw or Photoshop and you're using one of those color charts or color palettes over on the right hand side, which doesn't tell you anything about what your sublimation printer can do. So at Sawgrass, we've developed software, which is not programs, but they're drivers for the printers that take into account how to move that ink through to the printer the right way and also what the range, you know, gamut range is of those printers such that you have more control over the colors and getting them to come out the right way. So along those lines, we have created these uh, drivers that also feature color palettes that can typically be uploaded into your programs so that you're working with a color palette that was designed for your printer, which means that the colors in that palette are within the range of what that printer can put out. So if you take it and you upload into CorelDRAW the uh, color palette for the Ricoh 7700, and actually use that when you're working in your artwork, you know you're always working with colors that your printer can reproduce. And there's a good chance that it's going to come out pretty close to what it needs to be. And then you reinforce that by going and printing out that actual color chart, that complete color chart, and then sublimating it onto something so you have a visual reference. Now, please, if you haven't done sublimation before, be aware that when you go to print something, when it comes out of the printer and you're looking at it on the paper, the colors do not look right. The sublimation colors won't come to life until we put that transfer paper under the heat press and transfer it into the substrate, and that's when the right colors come out. So we always recommend that you install uh, our power driver into your system. It's free, by the way, when you buy your system. 
and then take that particular color palette, the color sure palette for your printer, upload it into your graphics program so that you are able to um, have that as a reference and then sublimate that chart out so that you can look at the chart because once you sublimate that chart onto something, you have a visual reference of exactly what the color is going to look like when it comes out and every one of those colors will have a name and you can use you can reference that name when you're working on the screen. So that way you know that what you choose, you choose by looking on the color palette you printed out and then you go to the screen and choose the same color and you don't care what it looks like on the screen because you know what it's going to look like when it comes out. So those are just some of the things that we put together for you to try and make your color management a lot simpler to get things to work the right way. And we have it for both Windows and for Mac. Okay, so we're almost done here. Uh, these are some of the basic things that you need to know, of course, to get into sublimation and to make some of the right choices. And that's important. Take some time to determine what works best for your situation instead of what's just the cheapest. Sometimes the cheapest thing is perfect. Sometimes it's not. So you really, because you're going to do commercial production for profit, you want to make sure your equipment can do what you want. So to be able to get the right sublimation equipment and substrates and whatnot, uh, take a look at what Jato has to offer. And Jato brought this webinar to you. But if you go to their website, they have some nice specials. They've got a range of things. And they have some very effective uh, people, such as David, who are specialists who can help you make the right choices for what you need for your particular operation. So with that said, I'm going to bring David back in because I know we got some questions here. And uh, I know that uh, there's some specials going on. So uh, David, if you want to talk a little bit about that RICO special going on, uh, and I'll just start taking a look at the questions over here. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. That was uh, very informative. Um, hopefully uh, you have all got some questions uh, for the two of us. Um, first of all, though, as uh, Jimmy just mentioned, we do have a special here at Jotto. Um, unfortunately, the, this webinar was a little badly timed. This, this has been running for um, approximately four weeks, um, but it does run out on April the 20th. But for anybody who is uh, looking to get into sublimation right now, um, it is a good time to take advantage, particularly with the GX7. 7700 special that we have. If you go to our website, um, for those of you that are in the US, that's going to be jottopaper.com. Uh, Don't forget the paper in there. A lot of people just search for Jotto, but it's actually jottopaper.com in the US. And in Canada, it's jottopaper.ca. Um, you know, if questions come up tonight after this, is, uh, this webinar is finished, and I'm, I'm sure things will come up later on as well. Uh, please go to uh, the website because you will find an awful lot of information on there as well. Um, one other thing to mention as well is, as I mentioned right at the beginning of this, I look after uh, Giotto Sales uh, North America um, in, in the western states. Um, anybody east of Texas is going to be dealing with uh, a guy called Wayne Potter. Um, I've been in this industry for 23 years. Wayne has been in this industry even longer, so he, he's very experienced as well. And I'd just like to quickly give you his email address, just in case you wanted to um, email Wayne overnight, his or any time, of course. It's Wayne Potter, and it's just how it sounds, W-A-Y-N-E-P-O-T-T-E-R at jossopaper.com. Uh, my email address is my first and last name, David Elvin, and uh, you can see that up actually up on the screen right now. That's E L V I N at jottopaper.com. Um, so if questions do come up um, later on tonight or any other moment, please give us an email, or as I said earlier on, go to the website. Uh, take a look at that special. Um, as I say, it is unfortunate there's only two more days to go on there. And one other thing I'd like to mention as well is Jotto is a, a one stop shop. Uh, we have five warehouses now in North America. We've got um, Blaine um, in Washington State. We've got Akron, Ohio. Uh, we have a new one that opened up in December uh, in Las Vegas. And then for our Canadian customers, and I'm sure we've got some Canadian people on here right now as well, we've got Vancouver and Mississauga. And some of the things that uh, Jimmy was mentioning earlier, like the products from Unisub, you, know, you are able to not just get the printers and the inks and the paper, from Giotto, but it is literally a one-stop shop where you can get all of these uh, types of dye sublimation blanks that uh, Unisub offers. Plus, Giotto also carries a, a wide range of 
products that we bring in as well ourselves. So as I say, take a good look through the website tonight, look at the special, uh, look at the blanks that there are, because it's no, you know, <laughs> people seem to forget it's no point in buying a, a printer and getting a heat press if you don't have anything to sublimate. So have a good look around on there and you'll see things like iPhone covers and mugs, a, a very, very large range of of products that are out there, and I'm just going to, um, I'm sure Jimmy's now had time to look through some of the questions that have come in, so I'm just going to pass it back over to Jimmy just to uh, to see what questions have been asked so far. Over okay, to um, one comment I'd like to make to everybody is, you know, moving forward, Jonto is, is looking to put uh, more emphasis on education to help all of you learn more, so give feedback to David or to Wayne about uh, topics you'd like to see in the future that you'd like to learn more about so that uh, they can get together with us and, and we can produce those things for you because the idea with all of these presentations is to, to give you more knowledge so that you can be more successful in what you do. Okay, uh, a couple of questions here. Um, any shows near Montreal soon? You aware of any, David? Uh, unfortunately not. Um, we were in Montreal. Uh, we were actually in Ontario. Uh, last year, the shows that are scheduled um, for the rest of this year are not, unfortunately, in Canada. They they are shows down in the states. Um, I will bring that up here, though, because it is um, it is some time since we had a um, an East Coast uh, Canadian show. So um, well, we will look into that. And uh, if you want to email that uh, question to us, I can forward that on to the powers that be here that arrange the shows. And, uh, and and you know let let everybody know that there has been that request made. Okay, um, is the forty three cents per shirt that you referenced for the seventy seven hundred based on eight and a half by eleven or thirteen by nineteen image or, or paper? Uh, it was based on the actual image, not on the paper. That forty three cents was for that uh, shark uh, design printed as an eight inch by ten inch image. The paper itself was. Um, not a factor per se because that was ink cost only. Bear um, in mind though, paper paper is very inexpensive. You know, the dye sublimation paper in eight and a half by eleven from Jodo is literally it's just fourteen cents a sheet. Oh, so that's paying, awesome. Four, yeah, fourteen cents a pack for a hundred sheets. Yep. Um, Kathy has a question here that I don't have the answer for it. Uh, I'm going to tell you that up front. It says I have. Uh, she says I have a Mac. My computer has a Windows partition, so I can run things like CorelDRAW. Which power driver should I use? I honestly don't know. Um, I think that uh, if you want to follow that up and send me an email over, I'll get that information for you. You can see my email there on the screen. Um, I, I just don't know. So, But we can find the answer. Uh, on a colored shirt, well, the white from the paper replace the white and the ink. It's not from the paper, but it's actually from the background. The, the color of the shirt is what you're going to see because always remember with sublimation, the transfer paper does not stay behind. The stand, transfer paper only carries the ink to the surface. The ink transfers off the paper into the surface. Then the paper is discarded and thrown away. Now, there are processes out there that are typically used with pigment type inks, which are called opaque transfers, where you apply ink onto a sheet of white transfer paper that transfer paper has like an adhesive backing on the back side of it. And then you got to typically trim the, the paper down so that you don't have um, extra white outside of the image area. And then you put that on with a heat press and it goes on like an emblem. And in that case, the white paper would represent the white that we, you didn't have for the ink. But that's called an opaque transfer. Uh, more common with pigment inks than with sublimation. And that is our questions for right now. So uh, that timed out well because we're pretty much at the top of the hour here. So uh, again, like David said, we got some addresses here, uh, email addresses. If you have a, you know, questions come up, let us know. We'll get answers for you um, to help you out the best that we can. So David, I'm going to turn back over to you. I, um, I appreciate being out here today to help you guys and look forward to working with you more in the future. Okay, thank you once again, Jimmy. Uh, one quick thing that I did forget to mention, uh, for those of you who would like to, um, often things come up that don't, aren't covered on our website, so if anybody has any questions 
and you can't find answers to anything that's on our website, um, here's our 1-800 number as well. And this works from uh, anywhere in North America, so it's also good for the US Canadian customers. It's 1-800-565-5686. And if you dial into that number, um, whatever part of the country uh, you are, you'll be directed through to the, to the person that looks after that territory. Um, so finally, I'd like to thank you all for joining in in this webinar. I hope it's uh, answered all of your questions. And of course, if it hasn't, please go to the website and uh, or give us a call on that number that I just mentioned. And thank you very much and good night and good evening.